welcome to another Captain of the video. It's Art here with a review for Dragon Quest XI. Let me turn down the music on my side so I can hear myself talk. And then we'll get to the beautiful art style by Akira Toriyama. Uh, the Dragon Quest... Um, the Dragon Quest artist and the uh, also the Dragon Ball Z artist. That's why it has that similarity. But I'm 26 hours into the game, so I'm not done with the game. So there will, will be no story spoilers here. And it's just... Um, it is just literally, literally grinding time, so it's, um, but I'm going to discuss things and that with you right now, because I can. Uh, the story so far is amazing, so you don't have to worry about that. The story's good. The art style's beautiful. The music is, uh, on point with Dragon Quest. I prefer the casino music over the overworld music, but maybe that's because I've heard the casino music less. Um, but it's all there. Everything that makes it feel like a classic Dragon Quest is all there. Hey, there we go. Time to change the line up. Put my boy back in charge here. Uh, and we're gonna get the double entendre magician going. For that, and I think we're good there. That was the you can change them right in the middle of battle, which is nice. You can change them at any point. I do have all seven of the main characters. They're they're all featured on the cover, so that's not really a spoiler. They're all featured on the cover. It is still turn-based mechanics, as per the usual for any Dragon Quest game. And it's very, very good. Uh, for the first time ever, you can dash in Dragon Quest, which means you hold down R2, and you can run to speed up time. That, that was a North American release exclusive, because they know we don't want to waste our time, I guess or they feel like we uh, wouldn't play it if, if we ran slow, which they're probably right, to be honest. Um, but... It's a very, very solid game, very good game. Um, for the first time ever, you can jump in a Dragon Quest game. So things are put up on high, and you're able to do the on high stuff. by jumping and, and by, um, shall we say, playing along. So that's very, very cool. It's very, very Goodness. awesome. It is a traditional Japanese role-playing game in its finest. Uh, degree. I know that eventually, I would suspect being a Dragon Quest vet veteran, I do not know this for a fact, but I, I would suspect being a Dragon Quest veteran that you would eventually get an airship. I am 26 hours in, you do not get the boat to start off with, but a boat is always included in every Dragon Quest game, and these games are not included. Uh, are, are, this game is no exception. To that rule and to that conundrum. 
So, the beautiful art style, I'm gonna go into town here and, and show you the breadth of the town here in a few minutes. If I can. Um, I will go into the town and show you the breadth of the town here in a few minutes. And I will show you the outside of the world. Like the the running around portion of the world. Uh, but the battle mechanics are what you would expect in a turn-based RPG. Uh, they are as good as can be expected in Dragon Quest. If you are a Dragon Quest veteran, then you know exactly what this game is, and you don't need to watch this review. So if you're new, this is the person I'm doing this for. Um, you're going to find a top-notch story and a story that will unfold, that will pull at your heartstrings. It, yes, it is typical JRPG trope. Your main character that you play is the savior of the world. That is typical JRPG trope. Uh, but Dragon Quest XI takes some interesting turns on that trope that need to be experienced. Um... Without saying more or less what they are, uh, I will just say that this game is amazing and it's beautiful. Uh, it is 60 hours for the main quest, another 20 to 40 hours for the post game. So you're looking at about a 100 hour hour game to total if you're to do everything. 80 to 100 hour game if you're to do everything. As in plat, let's get into another battle here and let's enjoy. Like you'll see, uh, Dragon Quest XI has the characters models in full 3D like Dragon Quest VIII and IX did. X did not come out over here in the West. X was the MMORPG that was only available in Japan. Uh, of course, uh, the Dragon Quest series is a, is a uh, Enix original. And any plus square, not the other way around, to form what we now know as Square Enix. Don't worry, I'm here to help. So, for those who didn't know, that's how that rolls about. Um, but you can see the Dragon Ball Z-esque character designs and influence all over Dragon Quest, or maybe the Dragon Quest influence all over Dragon Ball Z. I don't know which one came first. I'm assuming Dragon Ball came first. But the fact that they are both beautiful, the fact that they are both... Uh, Venerable series in Japan, uh, Dragon Quest Day is one of the very few days in Japan that the government has recognized as a national holiday. It does not mean that much, quite that much over here, but for me it is definitely a harken back to my childhood and a harken back to uh, games of better yore. And I am... I savor every Dragon Quest we get because unlike Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest has pretty much stayed the same. Improved on the formula, but kept the formula the same, whereas Final Fantasy kind of dips and dives and, and experiences change just for change's sake. Oftentimes when I'm grinding like this, what I'll do is I will just listen, either I'll listen to an audiobook over the music or a podcast over the music. But in this type of, of a game, grinding doesn't really bother me. Let's get on land here, and I can show you different aspects of the on land portion. Let me disembark and get on land here. Uh, the loading screens have very good um, information about the game and about 
certain things, uh, backlog and backstory, and sometimes they tell you how to run things and how to do things, and, but, As you see, this is Lanolulu, Lanolulu, and it sounds like Honolulu, doesn't it? But that tells you how beautiful the game is and how picturesque the game is. Um, and in true Dragon Quest fashion, when you die, you lose half your gold. You are you're not really you're punished in that way for dying but it's a, it's a very very soft punishment it's not a hard punishment at all it's a soft punishment and I prefer soft punishments I do prefer that there should be consequences in dying in games and I feel that that is a fair consequence because gold comes so easily let's look at some of the other NPC character models if I can see one I own but yeah, you can see that the game is very, very on point and follows its art style and makes its art style, quite frankly, look breathtaking. Uh, they added camps in where you can pray, which is saved at statues and rest at campfires when you're out in the main world. Um, the battles are now actually avoidable when you're on land. They are, not, however, not avoidable on sea. They do randomly happen on sea, and I'm grinding on sea because I'm near a coastal town. So 26 hours in, would I recommend that you buy this if it's your first Dragon Quest? That answer is yes. That answer is wholeheartedly, unequivocally yes. If you're even interested in the JRPG genre, I believe that Dragon Quest is a perfect jumping off point. I also believe that if you have a Nintendo Switch, then Octopath Traveler for the Nintendo Switch is a beautiful jumping off point. And it's possibly more forgiving than Dragon Quest XI, although Dragon Quest XI does a lot of hand-holding in my opinion. So in that sense, In that sense, it's totally, totally worth um, picking up. Now, do I think if you're a Dragon Quest veteran, should you pick it up? And that answer is, if you were going to pick it up, you probably already picked it up. But if you're on the fence, pick it up, because it's great. Uh, so in my scale, it's a buy it, love it, collect it. You need to have it if you're a fan. If you're a newbie, you should have it to give JRPGs a try. Um, on my n numeric scale, the very arbitrary numeric scale, which I only give because people ask for numeric numbers in, in this case, it's a um, 8 out of 10. There are some things that I'm like, oh, I wish that was better. I wish there were less load screens. Because uh, watch, when I go on to see here, another load screen. You know, it's not like a God of War or a Spider-Man that doesn't have very many load screens. God of War doesn't have any load screens unless you die, period. Uh, so it, it does hamper from the load screens. It's very, very um, archetypal as, J as a JRPG. It, there's nothing... It doesn't... It refines the wheel, it improves the wheel, it doesn't reinvent the wheel in the JRPG sense. So in that respect, if you're looking for something to reinvent the wheel, this is not the game for you. But if you're looking for more of the same, with even more improvements, then Dragon Quest XI, Echoes of Elu Elusive Age, is the game for you. And with that, you know I make videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday at 12.30 p.m. Central, 10.30 a.m. Pacific, 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more. Please let me know if you'd like to see more video game reviews. You've still got the... Uh, I'll probably do a Disgaea 1 Complete review. 
and I, I am planning on doing a Rise of the Tomb or Shadow of the Tomb Raider review uh, as well. And I'm looking for a way to do Valkyria Chronicles 4 and The World Ends With You Definitive Deluxe Remake, or Definitive Edition, I think is what it's called. So I'm looking for a way to do more of those reviews right now. The PS4 is the only way I can do that. But without further ado, please leave a comment down below. Please click the notification bell to let you know when I upload a video. Because uh, you will probably be getting a surprise video at some point. So without further ado, happy gaming, game on, quest on, and peace.